Okay, Mark L. Smith. Uh, the film The Revenant is based in part by a novel, and you adapted the screenplay with the director, Alejandro G. Inuritu. Can you talk a bit about just bringing the book from the page to the screen? Right, yeah. No, I, um, I actually started it on back in 2007. Anonymous Content and Steve Golan, the producers, um, they sent me the novel, asked for me to take a look at it and see if I'd be interested. I, I read it, loved the the general story and the idea. So I said, yeah, let's let's try to do this. So I adapted it back then. I um I took it. We didn't use a lot of the novel in our story, um, even then, because we we probably kept like glass as our our primary, you know, has our, as our character Fitzgerald and those names in the grizzly attack. But after that, we kind of, um, we kind of created our, our own version because we always, Hugh Glass is almost kind of a Paul Bunyan-esque figure. There's a lot of legend with fact. And so we found some different, some different types of, of, uh, ideas to use. And so, yeah, I, I got into, I loved it. I, I'm not, I'm a terrible outliner. And so <laughs> I, I don't, uh, I don't do that well, and so whenever I first started writing, I I, I jotted down on note a notepad all the the big moments, the big set pieces and action things that because I knew I was going to write almost like a silent film in a way, if that makes any sense. Um, I knew there were going to be you know thirty pages of no dialogue, and and so I had to make sure that every action there there would be no wasted movement. Every action had to be enough to keep the reader turning the page and not realize that nobody was saying anything. <laughs> and um, yeah. so, so that's so why I jotted down, you know, the big Arikara attack and, and, you know, the, the grizzly thing and the, and the horse going off the cliff and, you know, sealing his, his throat shut with, you know, gunpowder and a, and a fight on an icy river. And then I, I, I built, I built moments out of that and then built, you know, glasses character. And, um, and so that, that was kind of it. And so I, I knew again that it was, it was going to be so, quiet at times that I, I just, I, I kind of just, I, I love the challenge of that in a way that it was because sometimes when I write, and I think it's easy to use dialogue almost as a cheat because you can, you can kind of tell the audience what they're supposed to be thinking and what's, what, you know, is what is going on and, and to try to do it without um, was a little more difficult than I, than I first expected, but it was, um, but it was nice and it made me kind of really realize again that there was there could be no wasted movement that every every action that i wrote was kind of vital you know because it was it was taking the place of of a few easy lines of dialogue so right yeah well that's one of the things i was going to ask you about because so much of the film uh it is almost like a silent movie yeah. and uh i wonder as a writer uh when it comes to creating these elaborate set pieces like the opening scene for instance um you know, how do you write something like that so that A, it conveys everything that's going on clearly, and B, is, you know, good to read on the page? Well, yeah, that, that was it. It, it. Because when I first wrote it, it was as a, like a spec. And so I was writing it for readers. And, um, and so I, I had to make sure that, that I could keep them to keep turning pages. And so I, yeah, I, I just concentrated on really making you know, making the world feel real and alive. And so that, you know, the way I wrote it out, it was, it was long. It wasn't like a short script. It was probably, I think, I don't know that I've ever written a draft that was less than 107 or 110 pages for this. Mm -hmm. So it was always true. Um, and then the action was described. I mean, even like the, the Eureka attack, like you're saying, it was on, on page, it's probably five or six pages long. And, and everything, you know, the, the action was, was laid out so that you felt like you were watching it happen, you know, while you were reading. And the, the bear attack, it was, you know, probably three pages. And it was, you know, from the, from the grizzly pouring out of the, you know, out of the brush to, you know, that first swing, knocking him into the tree, leg snaps, you hear the crack, and then the dragging. And then, so, yeah, it, it was fun because there, there were no moments where, now we have a fight, you know, now we have, this is our battle scene, you know, this is, it was, it was everything, you know, the emotion of, of Glass's character and, and his, his motivation and the pain that he was feeling or the, 
whatever, it had to kind of be there. You know, he, he couldn't tell anybody. You know, I've said before, it's, it's not like Castaway where I, I had a, a volleyball to talk to. I didn't have Wilson, you know. And so Glass was on his own. And so everything had to come from, you know, from the quiet moments. And it was, and then once Alejandro got along, it was almost like Zen in the art of human survival. You know, we just tried to, we tried to kind of, kind of do it and, and be quiet and true. One, one of my favorite moments in the, in the film is Glass just kneeling beside a river and he's kind of starving and he sees the elk going across and mm-hmm. he picks up a stick because he doesn't have the rifle that Fitzgerald stole from him and he aims the, the rifle, you know, and you know in that kind of moment without a word spoken that this is a guy that's starving and hungry and doesn't have what he's used to having and in this world, you know, he, he's having to find another way to survive. And and it's in some ways, it's almost like I had to find another way to write the story, you know, because I couldn't, I couldn't use the dialogue. So, long, long answer to your question. There it is. <laughs> um, can you talk a bit more about working with Inuritu when he came aboard and what that collaboration was like? Yes, it was. Um, Alejandro's so wonderful. It was he. He brought in. It, it was almost as if the original drafts and I, I probably had written 10 or 12 for different actors or directors at that point. And, but when he came in, it, we used it almost those early drafts as a, almost like a railroad track going through like this barren wilderness and, mm-hmm. and the journey stayed exactly the same, everything that happened. And Alejandro brought in these beautiful, the, the beautiful landscape in places and thematically and, these these human these human emotions and things that were very personal to him that I could have never gotten to on my own, and um and so no it was it was great and and he and I would would go over stuff and I I wouldn't always see it and it's 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 kind of the mark I think of his genius that he would tell me you know no this this is going to work you just have to trust me and and then it did and um, all these things you know there were there were a few things that I said oh Hunter we can't do that it's just, it's just not gonna you know it's not gonna fly. And then, you know, Mark, trust me. And, and he was right 100%. Right, yeah. Now, you say that you um, started with the book and you took just uh, a little bit from it. So I'm curious yes. uh, what other kinds of research that you did to create this authentic sense of the period and frontiers life or, you know, what right. else did you look at? Yeah, no, I, I researched as much as I could. And also the author of the novel, Michael Punk, um, mm-hmm. He's become a good friend, and and I used him so much on because he's a historian on that on that area and during that time, and so he gave me so much information as far as the way people you know moved the, the equipment that they had, what they could use, and you know what kind of wildlife was there and what wasn't, and the different cultures that were kind of colliding at the same time. So no, he was Michael was so so critical to me, even though we didn't use a lot of what was in the, in the novel, as far as the story and the, the plot, he was, he was completely vital as far as giving us a sense of the world, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, what's so interesting about this movie is that on the surface, it's just this story about revenge. Um, right. Practically has it in the title. Um, right. Yeah. But underneath there's all this subtext about, you know, fathers and sons and violence begetting violence. And then, of course, this overarching thing about, uh, you know, the way that uh, we, you know, enacted violence against the Native Americans. And uh, so can you talk about, uh, as a writer, conveying those types of things in this very lean story? Right, exactly. No, we we were almost using, Alondra, that was the one thing that was so great when he came on. We We both, even though, it feels like it should be a revenge movie. We didn't want to make a revenge movie. We, we wanted it to be the revenge almost to be like a spark that ignited this journey. And so that gets us started, but it really is just something that kind of, kind of is against the backdrop of all, everything else that's going on. And like you said, it's, it's a, it's a father son story. It's a, a father daughter story. It's the, the two very different cultures kind of coming together and clashing in this world. But at the same time, we see Glass and his son and, and that pursuit. And then the Arikara chief and his daughter, you know, and they, they almost run a very parallel thing. And, and you realize that these two different worlds are, are still, the, the humanity is the same. And so those were the things we really tried to touch on and tried to use 
the, the journey of revenge just to kind of, you know, take us so that we could shine a light on, on all the other kind of more important stuff. Cause we, both of us felt like the revenge was so, it's going to be an empty feeling at the end, you know? And so it's like for glass to discover, I mean, this, this was about kind of over, you know, the human spirit overcoming, you know, these incredible odds and, and to be able to survive in this and, and, you know, these obstacles and how, how a father's love could drive you to be able to survive, to be able to do this. And so, yeah, those, the revenge, I know it is, like you say, it's in the, it's in the title of the book and it's part of it, but it's, it really was, you know, a small element. We were, we were trying to explore so many other things and, and how the native, the native Americans were being treated at that time and how the, that world, as we first arrived in the 1820s, it hadn't really been shown before very often in film, I don't think. And mm -hmm. we were trying to touch on to show that once, once we arrived, how, how we kind of started taking, you know, and, and how we, how we changed that, that world, you know, forever changed the cultures, changed the world. And not necessarily in a good way, but yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, the other thing is that even though it is such a simple story, it's such a vast visual epic film. So what do you think when you see it, you know, now that it's all come together? Yeah, no, I, I, once I saw it, the first time I saw it, it was like, you know, you know, wow, I'm a really good writer, you know, it, <laughs> but, but it wasn't the writing. I knew that, you know, it, it was just what, it was almost like I took it. It was a sketch, and I mean, uh, you know, to me, a screenplay is kind of a blueprint for the film. And then so many other amazing people get involved, and that's that creates your film. And so, it was almost like I gave a a sketch to Alejandro and and Chivo and Leo, and then they they messed with it and they handed me back like the Mona Lisa. You know, it's um, it's just was so it's just so amazing to see what I could see in my head and what I was trying to put down on paper, but doesn't always translate, but this translated and more, you know, and, and, and the way Alejandro and Chivo shot it to, to kind of put us there, I thought was so, so smart and so great because you do feel like you're on the journey with glass, you know, I mean, this is, this is, um, you know, you're, you're, you're right there beside him, right there with him. And I, you know, you, you feel the cold, you feel the, you know, it was funny. We were at the premiere last night and heard so many people talking about, they reached down and grabbed their jackets and they weren't sure why, you know, there were times when they put it over them, but you, you do feel it. And so, um, which I think is, it's a very rare thing to be able to pull off and they, they did it amazingly. And now it's generating Oscar buzz. I mean, what would that kind of recognition mean to you? Oh yeah, that's, it, it would be great. It's one of those things that you don't even, I, I write, I always write. I, I started this as a hobby, you know, it was just something kind of fun to do. I love stories and I love film and it was so anything, it's always a bonus. Everything's a bonus. I, I, I don't, um, I have, I have no preconceived notions of, of what, what should happen or what I would like. It's like the, the ride is really cool. And, um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to take it. So no, we'll, we'll see what happens. No, but it, it, it was so. It, it it was. It was just really. I'm I'm proud to be a part of it. It's. We were, I was talking with people last night, and and it's it's a film that I think is going to stand the test of time, and it's going to be you know looked at, and there are just so many amazingly talented people in it and involved with it that it's just it's something I'm proud to be a, a small part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great movie, and congratulations on it, and thank you for your thank time. You. Yeah, no, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Okay, bye. Oh, thank you. Bye now.